Hey everybody, Rich here in my XP. Looks like Windows 2000. This is XP though. But this is for Windows uh, 2000 users, Windows XP users, Windows Vista users, Windows 7 users, and Linux users because I'm going to show Claws Mail start to finish. Claws is an email client and it is the fastest graphical, even though it's a text based client uh, in the way it does mail. It's it uses it in a graphical interface. Fastest graphical IMAP mail client there is. It uses next to nothing. Next to nothing for memory usage. And it's actually quite awesome. Uh, the only pain in the butt part is that it is not easy to configure. But that's what this video is for. It's probably going to be a series of videos because this is going to take a while. But once all done, ah, you're going to love it because it's just it's amazing because it's just so quick and because it's so light on its feet. Now in the downloads area, clause dot, excuse, not dot, uh, clause dash mail dot org. Now it's ordinarily for Linux. Debian, Ubuntu, SUSE, Agentu, Solaris, Fedora, FreeBSD, uh, Unix, FreeBSD, NetBSD, MAMO, Sigwin, and then there's the Windows port. So I'm going to concentrate on the Windows side here. Fortunately, it says right here, a more recent snapshot provided by GPG4Win is available here. Now, GPG4Win is this. Now, primarily, GPG is supposed to be for secure email, but it's pretty much the only way to put in clause mail as a Windows installation um, without having to do the SIGWIN thing. And if you're going to use SIGWIN, you might as well just use Linux at that point. So the nice part about it is that it's a light version <laughs> it's already light as it is so that's the one we're going to get is click right here and just run now while that's doing its thing let me give a search here for uh, Sylphie now Sylphie on the other hand does have a native Windows installer but it doesn't have the uh, as many plugins as the clause mail version does so that's why I actually recommend using clause over Silphy. you could use Silphy if you wanted to because that's originally what clause is based on so and it actually has a screenshot here and everything actually you know what let me see if I can actually grab a screenshot well there's one right here it's a very basic mail client but anyway here we go All right. So let's run this, close the browser, and go for it. English, next, next, clause mail, that's it, next. Now it's going to put it in a folder, you should note this up front, in the uh, program files folder GNU, and then subfolder GNUPG. If this was Windows 7, it would put it in program file, uh, excuse me, if this was in 64-bit, Windows Vista or Windows 7, it would be program files x86 directory. So next, and I only want it on, yeah, actually I'll put it in all of them. Next, and it's actually going to call it GPG4Win because it is part of the GPG4Win suite even though this is just clause. And do our installation. Do you want to make your default clause your default mail client? This one I would actually recommend a no because it's kind of tough to make it not the default client after you set it. So you can if you want later though. Next. Now here, this is part of the security setup. You can skip this part where it says uh, GPG4Win needs a list of root certificates wh which you trust. If you have no idea what this means, that's okay. Just click this box root certificate to find or skip next do not show the readme finish alright we're gonna go for it here's clause welcome to clause mail now for this example I'm going to use a fastmail.fm account and uh, a free fastmail account and I'm going to use my local ISPs outgoing SMTP server this obviously will work with any pop or IMAP email account but I'm purposely going to stay on the IMAP side of things at least for the incoming server so forward your name email address and forward
forward. Server type, IMAP. Server address. You know what? I totally forget what the fast mail server is. Let me go find that real quick. I'm going to keep this in the video because you should know this information. Using fast mail with Outlook X. Okay, that should tell me the information. Okay, username, password, incoming server. Okay, where is the name? Let's try searching for .com. Oh, there it is. Mail.messagingengine.com. We'll copy that into here. Username, my email address, my password. Use SSL, yes. Use SSL via start TTLS. TLS. Uh, yeah, we'll see if that it should work. IMAP or server directory. I know that's inbox for uh, Fastmail. Now in Gmail, it might, I think it's bracket Gmail end bracket. I think, but for Fastmail, it's just inbox. For other services like AOL Mail. Uh, you don't need to put this in. It would say it in the instructions. Show only subscribed folder, yes. And forward. Server address. Now for this one I'm going to use my local ISP. Uh, I use Roadrunner through uh, Bright House Network. So that is, uh, it has a real big long SMTP server. And as long as you are con using their network you do not need to use any authentication. That is the case with most outgoing mail servers for uh, uh, internet service providers. Yours may be different. Now, you, I'd, excuse me, I don't have to use this if I was using, say, Gmail or AOL Mail, because I could use their SMTP server, like smtp.gmail.com, or uh, what's the one for AOL? smtp.aol.com. But for Fastmail, free accounts, they don't allow you to use the outgoing server. You have to give them five bucks a year so uh, to have that privilege. So what I'm going to do, do is use my local one instead, and I don't have to authenticate it. Forward. Configuration finished. Save. Unknown certificate. Do you want to accept it? And you view. Now this is the one for Fastmail, which is owned by Opera and uh, it is good, I know, so I can accept and save. Okay, so there we are. Now, did not find a secret PGP key. Now, if you have no idea what PGP is, which is pretty good privacy, that's literally what it means, uh, don't bother with it. When it says, do you want to create a new key pair now? No. And it won't come back. Okay, now here now we get to set this thing up. Now, even though the mail is working at this point, I don't even know if I have any mail in here. No, I don't. But um, I'm now goes through the setup process here, and this is the part where this is going to seem very long and drawn out. But I'm doing this on purpose to show you how to get everything pretty much set in a good way. So we're going to start with configuration, and then. Um, preferences for current account. Now, the actually no, I'm not going to start there. I'm going to start with edit accounts first, configuration edit accounts. Now by default, it, there's only one account here, so I'm going to edit this. The name of the account, it always puts the full server name in it, so I'm just going to delete all that and just call it fastmail. Simple enough. Apply. Okay. Now it's just called Fastmail. Let me just uh, see if I can... Can I resize that column? Oh, I can just resize it like this. That's a lot easier to read <laughs> than that whole account thing, so... An edit account. Now we'll go back to editing this account. Now for receiving... Let me look. Anything under basic I need to check? No. Receiving... Now if you happen to be on a very slow internet connection, you might want to check this box. Bandwidth efficient mode for IMAP connections prevents retrieving remote tags. This this does speed up IMAP a lot. So 
if you're on a slow connection you might want to check that off it really does help out a lot for sending okay now if you had uh, this is where if you actually are using an outgoing server if you need to set up a username and password to use it it would be here you check off SMTP authentication and put in your user ID and password which is ordinarily almost always the email address for the user ID and the password as the email uh, the password for the email account I don't have to do that here because I'm using my ISP's outgoing server uh, for compose now you might want to edit your signature here I don't recommend doing that I recommend doing it in the templates area instead so I would uncheck this and then just leave it like that now for this this is a cool feature which is uh, seen in Thunderbird but it's also here you can automatically set blind carbon copy reply to and carbon copies which is cool so that every time you send a message it will automatically insert like one of these some people like to do that this is where it is now I don't mess with the templates here uh, this is a template per this account per the fastmail account I actually do it on a global level and I'll show that later now for privacy you probably do not have to mess with this at all unless you're using PGP or some type of security thing now for SSL um, you can set SSL or not here and set again this is security stuff with certificates those of you that know how to work with it go ahead those of you that have no idea what this is about don't mess with it under the advanced section I do recommend checking all four of these boxes but we'll get back to that in a moment the only one that's a wrench in the engine here is the queued messages and also this is where you set your ports so if you want to set a specific port for IMAP or SMTP you can do it here ordinarily you don't have to because clause mail is smart enough to usually know which port to use but if it doesn't or if it uses the wrong one you can set them here and we don't have to mess with this so the first thing I'm going to do is I have to come back here for that queued part so I'm just going to apply this for now hit OK close I'm going to create a local mailbox on purpose just for the queued messages so file add MH and just call it mail. This is, I don't even know what MH means. It just, it's a local mail, but I think it's mail home. I think that's what it is. But I do this. This is the equivalent of storage folders in Windows Live Mail or uh, local folders in Outlook Express. That's what essentially this is. So I'm just going to minimize that or actually collapse the folder here. It does have its own queue folder. So what I'm going to do now is go back to configuration, edit accounts, edit advanced now I'm gonna modify this put sent messages in the IMAP sent folder queued messages in the local queue folder draft messages in the IMAP draft folder deleted messages in the IMAP trash folder so what we've got here is I have everything sent to the IMAP folders except for queue I do notice that Q does mess up on IMAP, which is why I do it this way. Apply, OK, close, and then collapse back to inbox. OK, now the next thing I'm going to do here is uh, let's see, do I do preference? No, I do plugins now. Might as well get this out of the way. Configuration plugins. There are only two plugins that we have to mess with here, and I'll explain each one there are a few that are loaded by default leave them be click load and do GTK HTML2 viewer this is for viewing HTML content of an email properly I do recommend loading that one in highlight and open 